in this section we'll talk about some layer 2 security feature called private vlans private vlans can be implemented to prevent the host within the same vlan from communicating with each other directly but now the question is what is this within the vlan so let, let me take an example in the service for a network so this is much more common implementation in the service for a network where you may require the customer traffic coming from let's say the customer abc I want to ensure that the customer traffic coming from ABC should not go to XYZ at the same time I want to ensure that the customer traffic coming from XYZ customer it should go to another customer site in the same way it should not go to any other customers like PQR or Y or ABC at the same time I want to ensure that the traffic coming from ABC must be able to communicate with the customer site here you can see site 1 or site 6 or you can simply say 1, 2, 3, 6 now we have a concept of VLANs for that like you remember you might be thinking about the VLANs but the question is if you want to do that now what I can do is if I go with a normal basic VLANs concept without private VLANs I can simply say that okay what I'll do is I'll make this port and this port part of the same VLAN so that any traffic coming from this VLAN will be automatically directed to this side in the same way I'll configure these two ports in the same VLAN so that they can communicate and I'll make this as separate VLAN this as separate VLAN but now when you do like this now how far you can go so if you have a switch and you have some hundreds of customers it's it's really not scalable to do that at the same time you have to ensure that each and every VLAN must be a part of the different subnet so I'm not going to use the same subnet anyway so you have to use a different subnet so there are some limitations with that we cannot go with uh, VLAN configurations completely with the customer sites especially when you are connecting to the WAN with the multiple customer sites so to overcome this issue what we can do is we can use a private VLAN concept where we can simplify this type of requirement now using private VLANs what I can do is I can configure my ports into different modes like I can say I have different options of private VLANs like we have something called primary VLAN and secondary VLAN so before that let me explain you what is primary VLAN so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the ports part of the same VLAN using private VLANs which means they belong to the same VLAN called VLAN 10 which will be acting as my primary VLAN and then I'm going to create extra VLANs let's say in my case I'm going to create VLAN 100 VLAN 200 VLAN 500 and I'm going to ensure that um, this this VLANs will be a part of my secondary VLANs which means within the VLANs within my existing VLAN I'm going to create a sub VLANs so again I'm going to create a sub VLANs and I'm going to configure these VLANs into a respective uh, modes like we have we have isolated VLANs and community VLANs so let me explain you what is the difference between isolated and community VLANs so isolated VLANs the host which are associated associated with this type of secondary VLAN it can only reach the primary VLAN and it will not communicate with any other isolated port so let's take the diagram here in my diagram here I want to ensure that I want to ensure that let's say PQR is my customer and the PQR customer should not communicate with any other customer sites so I'm going to make this particular port as isolated or this particular uh, VLAN will be isolated VLAN now when you do isolated VLAN same way I'll do the same thing for this one isolated now isolated VLAN is the one it will not communicate with any other port within the same VLAN so all belong to VLAN 10 all the ports they belong to the same VLAN but still they are isolated means they will not talk to each other any traffic coming from one isolated port will never be forwarded to any other isolated port okay so that's what isolated so I'm going to say this port as isolated port I'll combine all the port types once again and then there is one more type of secondary VLAN like we have secondary VLAN and in that secondary VLAN we discussed about isolated and then we have community VLAN or community type of secondary VLAN so when you say community means now you may also have a requirement that you have two customer sites in my scenario it's ABC there is one site here and there's one more site connecting on the same switch so I want to ensure that the traffic coming from ABC 
will be able to go so I want to ensure that these two sides can communicate with each other but they should not talk to any other uh, ports in the same VLAN so in that case what I can do is I can configure them in one community or one group let's say if I give community VLAN community VLAN uh, let's say 100 and I'm going to say community VLAN 100 now this when you say community VLAN it means it can only talk to the same community VLAN but it will not talk to any other isolated port and then at the same time they will not also talk to any other community also so that's what the difference between community and isolated when you say isolated it will not talk to any other port even it will not talk to any other isolated port it will not talk to any other community VLAN ports but when you say community the community VLAN 100 can talk to only the ports within the same community VLAN but they will not talk to any other community let's say in my example I have two more sites here XYZ now this XYZ sites belong to the same customer I would now want to ensure that these two can can talk to each other or communicate with each other but at the same time they should not talk to any other customer sites let's say ABC they should not talk the same way PQR they should not even talk to this community VLAN 100 which means in my case what I'll do I'll configure them in a separate community VLAN and this time I'm going to say as community VLAN 200 now this 100 200 or actually secondary VLANs which we are creating within the same main VLAN and in my example it is main VLAN is 100 so in my lab also I'm going to use similar kind of uh, topology similar kind of connections so it will really make you simple to uh, follow the lab as well now finally there, there you might have one more requirement that everyone should be able to access internet so which means the community belonging to the customer ABC customer XYZ and customer PQR Y everyone must be able to access internet so what I can do is I can simply go and configure this into another port type we call as promiscuous ports now promiscuous port if you configure any specific port type as promiscuous which means anyone can access anyone can access which means uh, all the all the community VLAN any community VLAN traffic can go to promiscuous can access the promiscuous port but they will not talk in between so this is something what you will find in service for or network requirements where you may want some of the links traffic they should all share the links they, can, they should be able to send the traffic to this particular specific site and sometimes you may want a specific sites of the same customers want to communicate and sometimes you really don't want them to communicate so we can configure by using a concept of private VLANs now this is the same lab uh, topology which I'll be using in my lab probably you'll see in the next section so that's what we are going to do so let's try to quickly uh, check out what we discussed let's try to uh, go through with the points here so it includes all the points what I discussed now now we'll get some idea like okay private VLAN is going to be implemented which is going to ensure that there's no communication within the same VLAN they cannot communicate directly so in order to ensure increase the security by separating the devices in the small VLAN which which is going to conflict with the design goal conserving the number of available IPs so these are general problems which we have if I go with a default VLANs concept whatever we learn in the basic switching so we are just going to head with a private VLAN feature which is going to address this type of issues where you don't need to go with a small small VLANs where you just have only one port in the VLAN and you you're going to use some separate IP subnets for each and every VLAN it's not required so what we are going to do is private VLAN is going to allow the switch to separate the ports as if they are on a different VLAN just like without consuming a sing with, with just consuming the single subnet now all the ports whatever I discussed they can be on the same subnet just like the same lab this is the same topology of the lab which we'll be seeing in our next sections so they are on the same subnet but still they cannot communicate with each other now majorly here this is a common place where we use a private VLANs is a service for a network where you want to allow the private VLANs to allow the service for to use one single subnet the whole building and the separate different customers ports so that they can communicate directly while supporting all the customers with a single router or a switch so just by using one device I can I can easily separate the traffic between all the customers and allowing 
the only the traffic whatever I require. Then we have seen some private VLANs. The private VLANs we have some primary VLAN. Primary VLAN is a normal VLAN which we create, whereas we can associate them with the respective secondary VLANs, where we can configure a specific port as isolated. When you say isolated, means it will not talk to any any other port. It will not talk to any other isolated port except promiscuous. Now isolated ports can speak to promiscuous ports, but they will not communicate with any other isolated port. They will not communicate with any other community ports. So they are totally isolated. Now we have community. When you say community VLAN, they can communicate with the same same community VLANs, but community VLAN of 100 cannot communicate with community VLAN 200. So that's the one more difference we need to know between them. And then finally, we have two types of modes we can configure. If you want to configure any specific port as a promiscuous, where you are connecting to a firewall or a gateway, where you want, uh, where you have an uh, internet traffic, where everyone should be access, everyone can access. We call we configure that particular mode as promiscuous mode. Now, if you want to configure any specific port as isolated or community we need to configure it as host. So this is a command we'll see in the next sections in the lab. We have something called uh, private VLAN, host association. So, so, so we just say host or promiscuous in that. We got two options in that.